Guys, this Yoruba man, Mr. Justice Falui, has finally shaken the table. This man blew hot fire on Tinubu face. Everybody knows that Tinubu government is a disgrace to the nation. Despite he's a Yoruba man, a lot of his people know that he's a fed president. Guys, let me leave you to watch this video. Yoruba was confused as well because this man speaks the fact with boldness. Good morning. Thank you very much for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. Well, Prince Faloy, I think the narrative speaks for itself. NRC says this is a case of uh, repression, intimidation, blackmail. Government says nobody is above the law and that there was a prior invitation to Comrade Joe Ajero and he decided to snub the DSS. So they thought they have an obligation to make him to respect the laws of the land. Is there an affinity position on these latest developments? We are concerned um, the way this government is going. Uh, not only the NLC uh, president is being harassed, but we have hundreds of people in, uh, I mean in jail who have been prosecuted for treason for partaking in the hunger protest. Now, how, how do you charge people for treason for a protest against them, um, I, mean, I mean, the destruction of their economic livelihood. Um, at the same time they went for Ajero, they also went to Serap. So, um, I mean, is that the same case with Serap? And we've seen, um, there was a, <coughs> I mean, there was a journalist called uh, Shoinka who came and oh, was arrested, yeah. yes. So, we are moving back to the days of Abacha if we were not careful. And that's why we are very concerned and we are asking for the immediate release of those who are locked up for treason. Even if you are violent during protests, you could be charged for willful destruction of property and other things, but never treason. And the question that we have to ask is that who is even treasonable here? Because what would Nigerians are actually facing the economic sabotage, because I would say it's economic sabotage when you have um, cut our real wages by over half. There's inflation. And this is, uh, and you know, they keep on telling us it's economic uh, reforms, whereas we see it as economic sabotage, even bordering on economic treason. Because, listen, we have, I mean, the main problems we have in Nigeria are the imports and petrol. Now, out of our imports, one third, at least 20, about $21 billion is spent on importation of foils and oils. The second highest um, a ticket is on vehicles. Now, this is a government that came in, and you know that, at, you know, within 100 days, we would have expected that at least 55% of, I mean, of that import bill could be uh, uh, taken uh, 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 care of. Uh, instead of uh, uh, reducing the vehicle uh, bills by making all government tiers um, buy locally produced cars, you go out, you buy thousands of, of, uh, of expensive foreign cars. Our refineries have got over 20 billion Nothing, uh, I mean, nothing is happening. And then we also have uh, these stories come out with Dangote's uh, uh, yes, refinery. So what do you expect the people of Nigeria to okay, say? Press, press follow you, by way of summary. <coughs> is, it, is this your opinion or have any further position? Because you are saying that the Tinubu government is sabotaging the Nigerian economy. It is. You are it, saying it is, that it is. Uh, they are guilty of economic treason. Yes. Is it your personal opinion as Prince Fallo? No, it's or something that is the position of Afeni No, Fale. it's something we have discussed, and logic, I mean, logic shows it that there was a way that the government could have resolved these economic um, problems. In Tinubu's um, a manifesto, on page 34, 36, I think he said categorically that he would not remove these subsidies until the fire is common. Now, you're coming up with um, these uh, foreign institutions 
pushing free market principles, which don't apply. Because in the first place, you are the monopoly uh, supplier of a foreign exchange in Nigeria. You supply over 80%. So the value of Nigeria indirectly is tied to you. Right. It depends on how much you supply that we're going to have. If you increase the supply today by 300%, All right. definitely the dollar will fall by at least 200%. Right. Same thing with the petrol. You are a monopolist. You are the ones who are supplying it. And so if you do something that is against our national interest, our national economic interest, then it's tantamount to economic treason. Okay. Right, so, um, I, I mean, from your stance, I want to assume that Fen Ferry was in support of the end bad governance and yes, that protest. Okay, so you were. Did you march? Did you go out to protest? Did, you, did people, did you support protests? The younger, I mean, the younger ones did. I'm, did. I'm nearly 60. I wouldn't be... No, everybody uh, of all ages went out I to would, protest. Uh, I don't think it was. We saw people... And like, we saw what happened with the Lagos protest. Mm. They were beating, I mean, they were beating journalists. They were beating, I mean, they were harassing people. Yeah. They spent billions bribing people not to come out. Billions, that's interesting. But let me ask about, um, yesterday we had the NLC publicity um, um, spokesperson come here, Mr. Benson Upa, and he had said that it was as a result of, it was a dis distractionary um, move by the government mm -hmm. to, with this whole Mr. Joe Ojeri issue because of the recent hike in petrol prices and the protests of NLC as a result of that now verbal protest. They said that the action will be taken maybe by the 1st of October or thereabouts. But that this is meant to distract them and the people from facing that issue. Do you agree with this sentiment? Or that uh, where Mr. Bayon Onuga through that statement has said, no, it's not a human rights um, violation. The president himself is pro-democracy. He himself had marched out in protests at different times. Do you think, I mean, what, what do you say about both sides of the story? You see, even the president and APC, because they come out and say there's some foreign involvement, they were being sponsored. But APC and the government, we know in 2014 when President uh, Jonathan came out and said they were being supported by foreign um, institutions, and we know that millions were paid to push the corruption awareness program. Nobody arrested them for treason. So how can you now come back and say, even if the, the, I mean, you had some foreign uh, sponsorship, which happens with all the CLOs, you understand? There are no weapons being exchanged. It's not a matter of ideology. People are hungry. So how can you keep nearly a thousand people, as we hear, in prison on treason? So is the government tries to distract us from the real issues by these things, or yes. they're just and intolerant? You know, we, you know, after the protest, we've also had another increase. So what we're now having is we're having different types of distractions. And, you know, the prices keep on going on. People, uh, and even uh, uh, the, the dollar is rising against Naira and the pound, you, you, you understand? Yes. So that is also going to feed into inflation again. So, and, I, and we also have high interest rates which has destroyed our economy or keeps on it. So, so employment is increasing. Rather than tackle the issues. They're not tackling the issues. They'd rather distract. And that they're that saying, saying that there's an economic reform. What reform? Can they specifically tell us which specific industries do they expect to grow from these reforms? When you see how you can cut the petrol and car importation, which is over half of our I mean, of our import uh, bills, you're not addressing those. And then you're now going in and making everybody's life difficult. Okay, I want to ask you this. What faction of the Federal Fair? Because we know... We don't have factions. I think you I know, said that no, last you know, time. No, I, and I'm going to say that because Parfaso Roti will not say all these things you are saying against President Tinubu. In fact, the case with them, Parfaso Roti Ako is Tinubu, Ma, Bashere, Lo... That's their case. So you said all of this. Some people in their very very will say, oh, this is alien. So what faction do you represent for the sense of clarity? Secondly, the next question I'll ask you is this. Uh, is it, would you say that this government has respected the human rights of Nigerians? And concerning all of this economic quagmire, does Afeni very have a position on how things can be better? Does Afeni very have a blueprint of some sort, you know, 
What are some of the ideas you are putting forward to be able to solve most of these problems? Okay. The first uh, question, I, we don't have a faction. We have some people who, for pre-pandemic, I mean, for pre-pandemic list um, motives, decided to go with a tenable. But so you think, say per fashion routine for preventative list motives. Yes. And I also come from Accra, you understand. But it's all on my wide coaching, you understand. That's preparing now. List. You so understand? That's the reason. It's just because uh, it is not Yoruba because of the policies. It is not because he was competent or it's just no, because he's Yoruba. No, that's why no, Definitely oh, not. Uh, definitely not. Look for 80 years. I mean, I mean, for the last 20 years, Afeni Ferry has criticized the way Tinubu has been ruling because we are social welfareists. And we believe in life, I mean, making life abundant. Even in Lagos, he didn't do it. You understand? Lagos would have collapsed under Tinubu if not because of the import market that we have here. It is not because of what he has done. No, but they said he, he did. He's the, he's the father of new Lagos. Oh. That he put every blueprint in place to make Lagos magnificent. Oh, and I guess that I'm... when Lagos, when he came into Lagos, they said Lagos was a shito. He transformed Lagos and turned it to paradise. <laughs> That's what they said he did. Well, you can tell that to the man in my degree. But we that live in Lagos know and you that. You wouldn't do anything well in Lagos? What? He's the father of modern Lagos. Listen, you built less than 16 kilometers of metro. Um, line in 24 years. How could you, you? You see, if he had finished the 160 kilometers in Lagos of Metro Line, we would have industrialized this economy. The same percentage, the same 70 percent of processing industries is what we are still having. Okay. It's still a neo-colonial yes. I mean, economy. So your solutions. What the solutions are this, solution? right? And do you think he respects human rights of people? That you can answer quickly. Are the solutions? The, the, I mean, definitely not. Okay, so what are the solutions? Economic solutions are very now. We, um, I wrote um, something about the Nigerian dream, right? And if you go back to what um, Roosevelt did, you understand. I would have expected that when he came in, the first thing was to get rid of at least fifty percent of our imports, then to, I mean, to take care of unemployment poverty and homelessness, he could have been engaged, you understand, in massive building of housing and railways. You will say, oh, we don't have the money. We do have the money. If you go, I mean, if you uh, take the, uh, uh, the modern uh, monetary uh, theory, right, you could deficit budget. You could build as long as you prevent that money from seeping into imports. So if you build, uh, let's say, a million or two million houses in every state, you understand, I mean, I mean in total, with 100% of raw materials, of well, locally produced. No, he didn't. Uh, he gave over 100 billion to the housing scheme so that they can start building houses. He's doing the coastal road. He's bringing about uh, uh, development. You see, you see, you see, there are different types you can bring infrastructure, right? <clears throat> we, I mean, we complained about the coastal road. When you build a road, you understand, you connect economic node points. You don't go and build a road okay, where there's no economy. I'm going to yes. deal with specific issues. Okay. Instead of this general talk. Yes. One, on the question of identity, you said uh, there, is, there are some uh, people who call themselves Afeni yes. who are pre-bendalists. Yes. Okay. When uh, President Tinubu got there, not too long ago, yes. some Afeni leaders went to visit him. To encourage, yes. were you part of that delegation? Definitely or, not. Do, or are those the people you are referring to yes. as the prebendaries? Yes. The people who are looking for something to eat. Because they were not going for the people. They were going for what could come to them. Otherwise, they should tell us okay. what programs they got or what concessions they got from the people from President Tinubu. Okay, so there are some Afeni Ferry leaders that are stomach infrastructure leaders. It's not only That's Afeni Ferry, there are a lot of leaders at both home and in yeah, Afeni Ferry everywhere. This particular Afeni Ferry group, they are stomach infrastructure. Yes, people. we have always had that as well. If you look okay. at back to two, okay. I mean, every election, okay. Tinubu takes those, I mean, takes a little group. Who want to eat and they go, but okay, Afeni Ferry continues on his identity is established now. Second point, Mr. Nonuga yesterday was saying that Comrade Joe Ajiro of the NLC mm -hmm. is not above the law of the land, that he had been invited. 
that can anybody imagine a situation whereby a labor leader will be invited by MI5 in the UK, right? Or Scotland Yard. And the person will not honor the invitation and travel. But you have tried to defend the comrade Ajiro here. Should there be a situation whereby somebody is invited and the person snubs the security agencies? Well, are there circumstances when that should be allowed? No. But we know that he was invited about two, three weeks ago. And he went. He went with a group, if I remember. Why are you intimidating? Because we see it as intimidation. What are the charges against him? Why was he arrested? I mean, I mean, therefore, and if he was truly, then why did you now release him within 24 hours? You understand? We don't believe that you, I mean, you need to keep on bringing the NLC president in for questioning for the inalienable rights <coughs> of citizens to protest. It's not, you understand? And, you know, he has a meeting, which we all, I mean, which we've heard about the TUC meeting, which is part of his labor group. Why did you have to arrest him before then? Well, you know, but you went to wait for him at the airport and arrested him and then released him. I'm probably going to arrest him, uh, uh, I mean, another week. It's intimidation. And it's not only NLC president. Because one thing I want to, because, you know, we tend to um, concentrate on the big fish. They are underage protesters who are currently being locked up for treason. Um, Ajero and NLC have, re you know, they have enough power to stop the government from harassing President Ajero. But what about those protesters who are being charged for treason? That is the main concern of Afeniferi because I came to this studio and I said, we support their inalienable rights to protest, especially in this case where their economic livelihoods have been destroyed under the pretense of an economic reform uh, program, which is fallacious. All right, so um, as you have mentioned, the government's response to the end bad governance and end hunger protests is arrests on the grounds of treason and other allegations. Mm -hmm. What should have been the alternative response? Because if people had come out to protest the fact that they were hungry mm -hmm. and they were tired of living in penury and not being able to survive and live, what should have been the response of the government? The government should have, I mean, should have done the right thing. All this um, economic... Uh, reform of uh, increasing rates. You are increasing rates against the cost push inflation. It doesn't, I mean, I mean, it doesn't make, you only increase interest rates against demand pool, not cost push, which you have cost. You, I mean, uh, we've seen now what's been going on between NNPC and Dangote. And even leave Dangote because it's a private. What about our own refineries? Over 20 billion has been spent, nothing. If there is not some conspiracy, if there is not those who are working against our national economic interest, the government, whether you use the army corps or you go, or you, I mean, uh, to the Chinese or anybody say, look, we'll give you two billion. We want this thing to work within six weeks. It could be done. But we have seen that because some people are importing and making money from subsidies, the whole country is being pushed down the slope. And we have to speak. You understand? And uh, I mean, the F1 tree is now, you are now charging those people for political, uh, I mean, a treason. Are you concerned that this would um, gag the Nigerian people from coming out to speak out against, um, against bad governance? And are you also the opinion, because they've come out to say that if, you, if you're not happy with our current structure, wait for the next election cycle. Should Nigerians wait for the next election cycle? Well, you see, the problem is that the election cycle, um, even, you know, without it being restructured, the people do not have confidence that even the, the next electoral circle is um, going to uh, be true and fair. 
So the question is, should they wait and suffer at least for the next few years before change comes? How long can you go on hunger? Um, I think if you look at medically, you can only survive a week without food. Now, how long are these people going to, you understand? To them, to the majority of Nigerians, is a political class. Because we went through this with um, Buhari for eight years. And then we started this, which is far more worse, you understand, within one year. And you're, you know, and you're telling us economic reforms. What economic reforms are you making? What you should have done is bring down our import bill by at least 50% within 100 days. You didn't do that. How would you have done that? How would you have done that? Yes. By make sure, I mean, like I said, 33% of that import bill is based on fuel, I mean, on fuels and oils, yeah. which we can produce here. You understand? Which our refineries and this refinery could produce. And which even he said in his manifesto that he would not remove until those refineries work. So if a serious government comes into power within 100 days, I expect those refineries to work. Now, we've been having excuses, but from what we have seen now that's happening now is that they are vested interest not to make those refineries work. We've also heard... They said it's mechanically complete. What, what, what do you think they mean by that? Well, they it told was, us that in December. They told us that it was going to work in September, in December, in January. I think it changes with the seasons. So it keeps changing positions. And so, because even General Obasanjo, I mean, President Obasanjo said that there's a problem with this uh, subsidy, I mean, I mean, I mean with these uh, refineries. There, there are those who are working against Nigeria's economic interests, and that is economic sabotage. Do you think President Tinubu can fight those people and defeat them? Well, so why is he there? So he should be able to fight them. He should people. be. That is his duty. His number one duty is to protect Nigeria's economic interests, regardless of who it is. Okay, another question I would like to ask you is, you said reduce our import by about 50%. It's a highly import-dependent nation. No, You've it's not. You've talked about fuel. No. It's not. I mean, almost We only have 16% of our GDP is based on imports. That's, the GDP, I mean, that's our GDP import our, ratio. Our and we have countries... Our medicines, do we, do we, do we make our you medicines You see, even here? when you look at the medicines, when you look at... They are nothing compared... Do we make our equipment here? Even that equipment, you understand? Put all the, I mean, I have mentioned to you that two thirds of our imports. We still import uh, miso. Yes. We still import food. Though. Yes. Yeah. And all the food is we're 10%. Not see, we're not seeing rice right sufficient. You yet, see, so. that is 10%. Yeah. We have one third foil. Yeah. We have 20% cars. That is 54%. When you and come we in. cars locally. We produce cars locally. Yeah. So if the government and had the come in... the president does not even drive yes. in Nigeria mid car. You see. Now, if the government had come in and said, all tiers of government should use Nigerian cars, could you imagine the impact on, un uh, I mean, um, on employment? Because they would have to grow. It would have solved our unemployment uh, 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 problems. So you can see that... While our issues, 55% of this import could be wiped off within 100 days, but you now put the whole country into this false narrative of free markets. And we know where this, and the only reason why they're doing this, and I have to say this, is that they're working with some financial institutions, international funds, and I mean, this year alone, he's taken about $12 billion. What for? Because this international financial institutions do not give us loans for developmental projects. So you're saying the Bretton Woods are killing us? What is the future direction of Afeni Ferry? In the last few months, we have not been hearing from uh, Northern Elders Forum. I had a consultative forum. We've not been hearing a lot from them. But uh, your faction, you, you say there's no faction, your Afeni Ferry group, has been very vocal. Is uh, the future direction of uh, your own group within Afeni Ferry to become an opposition party uh, to the uh, Tinubu government? We are not because an we, opposition. we need to know what the direction is. We are not is. an opposition party, or even though the way we have seen things is that we might have to um, create a party 
or um, join a party. Because what we have now is politics without ideology. And this has been going on for so long. And they come in with these neoliberal economic policies, which is killing our people. Uh, I find it fairly well told it's supposed to be a social cultural organization promoting the interest of the Yoruba people. When but you are sounding more you like an that? opposition. When did you opposition have that? party? Because Chief Aulo was not just a social party because Afeni Ferry is based on Chief Aulo's political vision. He's um, this uh, social democracy and social welfareism. Now if we are pushing that and we realize that there are no um, parties or then we have to step forward and make sure that the people are uplifted by the only way we believe they could, I mean, we have our cardinal points. We had UPN, we formed um, SDP, we formed AD. So I don't know when, you know, if not because of the, the, those who want to enjoy ependalism, who now wants to uh, make us as a Yoruba party? It is not about <coughs> being a Yoruba party. It's about the ideology of uplifting people. It's, I mean, it's about the ideology of making life more abundant. So you talk about supporting a party or forming your own party. If you were to support a party in the interim before you are able to gather, what party would you be supporting currently? Any party that pushes our cardinal points. Have you identified any of them so far? We are in the process. Okay. So you understand? The current in the last party, election, we yeah. supported. Um, uh, Amit Pitobi, based on the cultural justice of the rotational pre uh, uh, and he also agreed to um, uh, uh, Amit restructuring. And going back to the RIO as well, I mean, they too have come out that they need restructuring. And we're looking to that, that yes, we will work with anybody in Nigeria that wants to restructure the political um, a landscape of Nigeria okay. to devolve power to the lowest. I mean, and that's not. Uh, I mean, that's not political. So that's just pure economic. You're currently in talk with Arewa. How about? No, we're not in talk. Okay. But we've. I mean, we've read their statement and and we we appreciate it that at least they too can realize that. I mean. I mean, from their statement, we, I mean, they talked about insecurity and about the economic problems. So yes, at least, because initially we had four uh, regions who were pushing for restructuring. But now they two have now come out and say, yes, we want restructuring. So, so um, you see, there goes the problem of the identity again. When you, as a factional representative of Afeni <laughs> Fede, say you want to go the route of one party, and another faction of Afeni Ferry said we support APC. And you people were split across middle lines in the last election. So what are you people really saying? Afeni Ferry is not one as we speak. Because all of these things you are saying, if I call the perfection roti faction, they will say that you don't know what you're saying. Hold on, hold on. And all of this, and I just want to quickly correct you. You said the government has spent about 20 billion on their refinery. No, they didn't spend 20 billion. It's about 2 billion there about that they have spent on their own refineries. All right. It's about two billion they spent on their own refineries. The revamp of the refinery. It is Dangote that spent twenty billion. No, since when? To build since his, his how refinery. much have we spent on repairing refineries since it's twenty? It's, it's the turnaround maintenance that was just looked at, and money was released to do the turnaround maintenance. You're talking of the last the right, one. It was yeah, the last turnaround. No, maintenance. we're talking that for the last. I mean, when last did our refineries work? When last did they work? Twenty eight years ago. Yes. No, when last did they work? Dr. Mati, hang on. And when last since that work? period, yeah. we have been spending money to revamp those refineries. So those, those were not monies for turnaround. What were they for? Those were, those were monies to upkeep the refineries. Just like the NMPC. Oh, no, wait. Non working refineries? Oh, yes. Didn't you see the NMPC report that said they were paying people in refineries that were not working salaries? Put all that money together. So and we it, still have nothing. So has NMPC given you an empirical figure that is 20 billion? No, where did you what, get the twenty no, billion? What we've had uh, is that cumulatively, over the last twenty so years, it is twenty billion. The government has been pumping money. Every government comes in and says we are going to repair the refineries. So has it made up to twenty billion? Where did you see that? That is what we. I mean, I mean where, that is where's the your source? Well, where is your source of the data? It's a combination of sources. Where is your source of the it data? It is there. It is there. I mean, you could, if I mean, you, you can provide the source, then let's move on. Secondly. 
I'm also asking because it's an identity crisis that is coming up. You are saying you people want to pivot towards any political party. All of this things you are saying, the first priority will come out the next day and say, you know, you're just sucking garbage. And, and in the first up. place, secondly, you keep mentioning empty fashion. But he's the, he has I come back to say no, he's the leader. No, no, but you have in the press that he he's written resignation letter. But he has since So come why back, are you keeping on somebody no, but who he has, has no, obviously with, with officially he has since come back to say he's the leader? When but let's leave personalities. When they went to see President Tinobu, like you, I lighted, he didn't go there. As uh, Papa Shoroti, he went there as the head of Afeni Ferry. The head so, of Afeni Ferry is Papa Ayo Adipanjo. Papa Shoroti doesn't believe that. Well, you we see, we are stating the facts. But you see, we are non Let's put that yet. aside. We are stating you the understand. Facts. Most, most important, important thing about Afeni Ferry uh, is our cardinal point, is our philosophy. And if you do not stick to that philosophy and to those cardinal points, you are not Afeni Ferry. Simple. Okay, whatever you say, Papa Shoroti is still also a leader in this affair. affair. Moving on, I, I really wanted to ask you a very important question. And it's going to be the question about uh, this protest, this August protest, mm -hmm. and this talk about trying to lock children up for treason. I'm bringing up that issue because it has set a very bad precedence in our country. The criminalization of protest itself, mm -hmm. it's a replica of the days of the Abacha. Uh, I mean, of the Abacha days, which frontline people, probably a united Afeni Ferry, were part of those that also said, no, this shouldn't be the case. What are you people saying as regards this criminalization of protests now? It is, you see, it's not only sad here, but it's, but it's even gone in, I mean, on international press. If you Google it, you will realize BBC, all this, you know, across the world, you know, are placing it that Nigeria, is criminalizing protest and even underage uh, protesters are uh, you know are locked up this is not democracy anymore we are sliding uh, uh, and we have a statement you understand where we advise um president tunubu to listen to the advice of uh, professor shoyinka recently about fascism we need to ensure that Nigeria does not fall into a fascist dictatorship. You think Nigeria is falling into a fascist dictatorship? Yes. You think President Tinubu's administration is a fascist yes. dictatorship? Yes. Because when you arrest underage, when you arrest people for protest, when you criminalize or, <coughs> or select a whole ethnicity and attack them, when you, are, uh, when you attack your opponents, and anybody that speaks against you, that's fascism. Okay, Prince, okay. before we go, this last Sunday, I think it was September 9, a group of Afeni Ferry leaders, uh, Agba Kenfolani, Jari Ajayi, and some other people, they visited Pa Ayuade Banjo, it was reported, to uh, you know, commend him for his patriotism and leadership. Were you part of that uh, delegation? Mm. What faction of Afeni Ferry is that? That they just came, um, I'll say, I'll say that was just a media game. It wasn't, uh, you shouldn't attach you anything. They are members of the executive committee of uh, which Ferry. executive would, if Chief Ayo um, Adebanjo, who is the leader of a Feni Ferry, would the executive? Or some executive he come and visit him. He was the one they visited. No, but and they, no, they but, said things. But, that. but you, you were see, not there. But you, you, you see, you see, you see. He is, is a the leader. Of he Afeni is Ferry. a leader. You understand? Now, you would not expect an executive council or executive board that he, as the leader, chose to come and greet him. So that is the. Okay, you, are you aware of that? Are you aware of that? We are aware of Richard, we are aware of, uh, we are aware of uh, many games being played by different people, but it's not the first time. Well, you, I, uh, I, I, I since, am tempted to conclude that there is confusion. Since no, there is no confusion, the, the, some people might want to blame confusion. But like I said, Afeni Ferry, you understand, the true Afeni Ferry will be known by the fruits of its activism, the fruits of what it puts out. It is not about going to the media and taking effort. No, it is where you stand on national issues. It's okay. You speak for Afghanistan. There was a major meeting and a major visit. You are not aware. <laughs>